Hi friends, very good afternoon. Welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSA English with India's largest learning platform and academy. Let's crack it. Friends, please drop a confirmation message. Is everything is good to go? Am I visible? Am I audible? Is things all clear? Yes. What all you will get under an academy platform? Daily live classes, isn't it? Yes, my dear friends, every day. Okay, I meet you all at 2 p.m. in the live classes. What is the best part of is that you can chat with your educators. Yes, engage in discussion, ask your doubts and answer polls all while the class is going on. Yes or no? Yes, the prime objective behind this is to make the class more interactive. Yes, so that you will not have, you will not have the feeling that you are missing your offline classes. Yes, hurry. Very good afternoon. Live test and quizzes. Yes, my dear friends. A big announcement is waiting for all of you is that about the upcoming five full length mock test series. Yes, the big two great gift is waiting. What is the two gift you can ask me? Yes, start your preparation for the top three. First to top three aspirants. Anyone, if you are going to be one among the top three for them, an academy subscription is free for six months. Is that is only one gift? No. Apart from that, the academy is also, an academy is also providing an opportunity to create a platform that you can interact with the UPS, UPSC toppers live. Wow, what an amazing experience. Yes or no? Yes, you can interact with them. You can get your doubts clarified. In fact, you will get motivated and inspired. Isn't it? Yes, I can. Now I can hear your uh, mind voice that, ma'am, if we miss the top three, what would? Yes, one more gift is waiting for those top 25 rankers. If you be one among the 25 rankers, for them only one gift, that gift is that, an academy subscription free for three months. Yes, if you want to be one among the top three or one among the top five, what do you have to do? You have to do only one thing that is soon, immediately enroll to UPSC championship program conducted by an academy. Yes, I extend my wishes for all of you to be one among them and utilize the platform to its fullest. Yes, my dear friends. So, of course, September 13, uh, one of the mock test uh, analysis, English part, I'll be doing, your DL mom will be doing the discussion. Okay, I'll catch you all there. Yes, ma, this is a fine announcement with respect to today's. Next is that structured courses. Yes, all our courses are so structured in line with their exam syllabus to help you best prepare for it, isn't it? Yes, in one word I could say it is a OSS for your PMI, one-stop solution for your prelim mains and interview. Unlimited access to unlimited courses. What you have to do? You have to do only one thing. That is one subscription gets you access to all of our live and recorded courses to watch from the comfort of any of your devices. For which you have to download an academy learning app. Yes, what is the next best thing is that prepare with the top educators. Yes, all the best brains and all the top educators are found under one roof and needless to say that roof is an academy. To name a few, Mridal sir, Roman Saini, Ayush Shangi, Sudarshan Gurjar and the list is endless. Utilize the platform to its fullest. Okay, comprehensive syllabus. What is this ma? Yes, this again, are you looking for the course with respect to ma'am, I need to have a means answer writing practice. Yes, ma'am, I'm looking for an optional courses. I'm looking for environment and ecology. Whatever might be your search, whatever you are looking for, everything is provided readily under one platform. That is an academy. That's why very often I keep saying that this is an OSS for your PMI, isn't it? Yes, my dear friends, for UPSC, CSE category alone, we have 15,000 or courses. The detail here is an ongoing courses as well as the upcoming courses. Okay. So, utilize it to the fullest. What next? Yes, about me, about myself. A small introduction. Yes. I am Dan Lakshmi, a senior top and a passionate educator. Yes, I am your DL ma'am. Yes ma'am, with respect to my teaching experience, I have more than taken long rich experience in teaching for UPSC, CSC alone across India. Yes, I am a freelancer. I am a senior most faculty in the offline academies in all the top academies in South India. Yes, I take classes across India, Bangalore, Delhi, Hyderabad, etc. Yes, 
Apart from my teaching experience, you can ask me, ma'am, could you share your credentials with respect to civil service? Yes, my journey with civil service is very big. It is a 15 years travel. Wonderful journey I have. Yes, I'm a Vajram student, 2004 October batch. I stepped into civil service preparation 2004. That's why in a very sarcastic manner, I used to say always, I used to call myself as an ancient, medieval and modern to civil service. Yes, but I have appeared twice in UPSC CSC interview with six consecutive mains. Yes. How did I clear six time prelims with ease? That's the best thing. Na? One day I will make a video on how did I make this happen. The dark secrets will be revealed very soon. Apart from this, a very special note is that of my 13 years teaching experience, I have mentored more than 25,000 aspirants who have been preparing for UPSC CSE. Yes, and very special note is that many of my students who have cleared the exams with the flying colors that is in a top ranking and now they are successfully, effectively, efficiently and honestly working as an IAS, IPS officers across India. Yes, my dear friends. So, like uh, my journey, my experience and expertise with fielders will greatly help you for the upcoming bureaucrats. Yes, I would like to transform the same to the future bureaucrats. You can do one thing that, that is using my code, DL code, my referral code is DL10. Using this, go for the subscription without any further delay. Yes, apart from this, I have also attached to my Unacademy profile link. Get into the link. Yes, you can follow me and you can share your feedback through using different color hats and dedications. Next is UPSC CSC subscription. In order to avoid all the best things which is available in the platform, you have to do only one thing. One subscription will do wonders in your preparation. Believe me, take my words, friends. Yes, but one thing, please don't waste your, don't do any trial and error method here. Please don't waste your parents' money by going for one month, three months, six months in no way it will help you. I don't even recommend one year also because you are in the halfway, midway. Yes, you are preparing for one of the so-called toughest exam in the world. I don't agree to it fully. I always don't say it is a tough or difficult or impossible. Whereas, we have to accept one reality is that it has a vast syllabus. Is or no? Are you going to prepare only for the first stage prelim? No. For all the three stages, prelim means an interview and also for all the subjects. So, you just ask this question to yourself. Is it enough? Can, will you be able to get yourself prepared for the so-called, okay, mother of all written exams, civil service examination with less than one year preparation? Definitely not. It is not possible. So, it is always strongly recommended to go for only two years per uh, subscription. Why? Because on two perspectives. What is the two perspectives? Now, one is that the minimum time frame required to get yourself ready for the civil service examination. Yes, you have enough adequate time. One and a half years is more than enough. Yes, with the impeccable determination. Second is that. Second, one is the time frame. Second is that monetary benefit, TM. What is this monetary benefit? We have a huge monetary benefit for the entire 24 months. For the two-year period, the fees is only 64,000. That too, you use my code DL10. You get 10% instant discount. After deduction, after all computations, the calculations, subtraction, you have to pay only 57,600 rupees. Yes or no? Yes, my dear friends. Now, this is the uh, fee structure with respect to plus. Now, one doubt in front of you about the recent launch of Iconic subscription. Ma'am, can you just brief it? What is the difference between the plus and the Iconic? Simple, ma'am. It's very simple. Just go through this slide. What is this mentoring? Yes, two person. One is a, of course, both are. Winner. See, one is striving to reach his dream destination. One at the top is who have already sailed through the terrain. The phase, what he is trying to make. Yes or no? It is nothing but successful people never reach their goals alone. Yes, you can start your journey from any point of India. Being at Kerala, Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, even at the remotest corner of any village, wherever it is. Because it is an all India service, anybody can aspire to become a civil service exam. So, there is no restrictions. But all of us wanted to reach only one destination. The beautiful destination is waiting for you is Labasna. Yes or no, my dear friends? Yes. 
then you can ask me ma'am this is the starting point and this is the end point but the journey in between the starting point and the end point is a such a long journey long way to go yes my dear friends it is not bed of roses it is thorn of bushes the difficulty the topography and the terrain you are going to come across in between your starting point and the end is that really a challenging task for which you are in need of a support system that support system will be taken care by the mentoring service which is being done under the iconic subscription yes i become a mentor because i wanted to give the thing i didn't realize is how much i would get yes so are you i am raising a couple of questions are you looking for personalized individual attention personal coach you are ready to write a you are ready to write answers means answer but you got somebody has got to say you how to improve your answers you want them to evaluate is yes or no that to not the normal person the senior most fellow okay the senior most person have a very good rich experience in this field fine and you also looking for somebody has got to help you in making a customized study planner because you are new to the space yes personalized feedback if you are all have these set of you are seeking for these help these support system apart from the live class access apart from the test series apart from the unlimited practice apart from the structure schedule everything is available under iconic subscription yes for which you have to go for 24 months yes use my code dl10 while taking iconic subscription as well so don't forget your dl mam code yes in name itself we have the code referral code thank you my dear friends the last but not least word is that go for a smart decision wise decision above all it should be a timely decision is or no thank you one and all yes now we are into the second part of world revolution part 2 as on yesterday we have completed in fact we have started writing an answer on one question which has been asked in your upsc mains last year isn't it previous year's main question we have completed that now today i have to begin from the part 2 what is that ma yes enclosure movement hope you all uh, I have given you an assignment, right? What is that, ma? With respect to the question we have discussed yesterday, I don't know how many of you have done with that because I have also helped you in coming out with that answer. So you can make an answer. Is or no? Yes. Now from this slide, I have to begin my today's session. Textile industry. Is or no? Textile industry. It's a quick glimpse over to the previous classes we have moved on. Please drop a confirmation message. I'll begin the session without any further delay. Yes, textile industry in the 1700s, the East Indian Company was sending cotton cloth from India to England. Why? Because our cotton is of a very good quality, and all the Indian queens, okay, the kings, the kings, uh, queen, they are very much fascinated towards towards our cotton cloth. soon calico cloth made in calicut and dhaka muslim and kashmir shawls were in great demand in england they forget about their clothes okay there was a huge demand for our products because we always stand first in the quality is on our quality is unmatchable with anyone shrewd english businessmen then began to import cotton and make it into cloth in england so they took the raw material from us and the finished product is taken care by them at the england when the workers were using the old fashion spinning wheels and hand looms could not keep pace with the increasing demand now there is a more demand yes i need a bulk of order i need a 500 set of uh, clothes yes i need an end product so just by uh, using the old fashion the uh, spinning wheels there the production will be less output will be less you can you can make it only in hundreds but you can't expect the you can't meet out the demands the demand is very vast in order to meet out the demands a series of inventions the technology revolution the technology invention has happened first in the textile industry in which way a series of inventions came along to make faster spinning and weaving possible why in order to meet out the increasing demand why there is a demand if the quality is good yes or no yes our quality is in such a way that there is a huge demand so in order to meet the demand there was an introduction of a faster spinning and weaving possible in the textile first next is in the power loom shall i move on ma 
we are discussing the revolutions which are which are all the sectors the revolutions has happened during the uh, industrial revolution hargreaves try to remember hargreaves who invented a machine which speeded up the spinning yes now we are making a machine which will increase the speed accelerate the speed of the spinning arkwright please try to remember this arkwright adapted this machine for running with the water wow now is any of your machine is running with the water no everything is like an electrical mode yes or no but arkwright was the first person who have made the machine he has tested with the uh, for running with water crompton sometime later combined the advantages of the machine invented by hargreaves and arkwright these three inventions alone alone made it possible for england to produce the thread to produce the thread that was finer and cheaper than any that could be produced by others or with older techniques so this is the end result it is a combination of all the three invention hargreaves arkwright crompton these invention made it possible for england to produce this thread which was so fine in fact and cheap okay the quality is also good very fine quality good quality and also it is cost effective cheap than any that could be produced by others or with the older techniques always they wanted to prove themselves england big b is or no next is then in 1785 cartwright invented a power loom yes this machine could he run by horses or bullocks and later on when factories were set up along the rivers and canals water power was used to operate it so the next revolution has happened in the with respect to the power loom first is in textile don't try to detail these things try to make it in only one or two points okay that is this is for our understanding when you happen to write an answer your answer should be such that it should be in a very crystal clear and to the core okay next third is the cotton gin but in a raw cotton for feeding these machines was still not available because of the process of separating the fibers from the seeds was very slow this is a huge project na how many of you have seen the cotton uh, tree ma is it easy to take the cotton is it easy to take the cotton no separating the fibers from the seeds is a herculean task it's a huge task a worker could clean only 5 or 6 pounds of a cotton a clap by hand so it is a very hard working work it uh, it requires a lot of a manual effort so for which in order to reduce the manual effort in order to increase the time consuming of course it's a time consuming isn't it so in order to reduce that or replace that they have uh, introduced a cotton gin next is in 1793 eli whitney an american un invented a cotton gin this machine made it possible to separate the seeds from cotton 300 times for the for faster yes the machine you are doing dl ma'am is doing the work by for 10 times okay 10 times and the machine invented is doing the work 300 times more than dl ma'am so whom you will go you will go after the machine only because it is very fast what you are looking for is very fast it is happening just for example i said okay so this world itself we are marching towards a faster at a faster pace fine next is that the tremendous increase in the raw cotton imports would not have taken place but for the invention steam engine tremendous increase in raw cotton imports how we want to import the raw materials has to be imported from india the finished products is taken care in the england as yes or no tremendous increase in raw cotton imports would not have taken place but for the invention the steam engine by james watt the credit goes to the james watt who has invented the steam engine by 1769 it was this machine that made it possible to produce goods on really a big seal machines run by the muscles of men animals or by the water power could not compete with those driven by the steam engine i saw no so the normal thing is like the normal work is doing uh, done by the men and the animals or the water power it's more 100 times the, more than the work done by the steam engine steam engine when you in 
uh, when you insert a machine power, definitely, see, normal boat is differ from a powered boat. So, no, ma, how the speed will be? Definitely so. The normal work done by the men and animals could not keep patch with or compete with those driven by the steam engine. This is one of the reasons which has made the revolution in production. This invention, very special. Very special as a steam engine which has made a tremendous uh, uh, changes in the revolution of course uh, in production. Next is blast furnace. Why? Because industry itself, major iron and steel industries. Yes or no? These are the key industries. Blast furnace with the steam power available, there is the demand for more machinery. Yes, when steam power, steam engine is fitted, yes, the speed is accelerated, the production is more, revolution in the production. When you can make in, in the place of 10, if you are if you are capable to produce 1000 means and it is also with a finer quality, cost effective, yes, there is an increase in demand, okay. In order to meet out the demand, England had a plenty of iron and coal to make steel and manufacture machinery. But new and cheaper ways of processing iron had to be found out. See, always it is very difficult to turn oil, oil from crude to refined. Yes or no, ma? From crude to refined has to be done. So, in the similar way, England had a plenty of iron and coal. Yes or no? This is one of the biggest asset they had. Among the other six factors, one of the prime reason is that they had a plenty of natural resources, iron and coal, that to beside next to next, okay, to make a steel and manufacture machinery. Fine. But we want to find a ways, it should be very innovative, new and cheaper ways of processing iron. Processing iron, this is the keyword you have to remember, okay, processing iron has to be found. For that only, the development of the blast furnace and later the method of turning low-grade iron into steel enable the English industries to produce the steel cheaply. What is their objective? They wanted to come out with a fine quality. Apart from that, the fine quality, it should also be cost-effective. Yes or no, ma? Cheap, steel cheaply. Thus, they could have more and more better machines. Thus, they could have produced more and better machines. Blast furnace is one of the important. Next you can ask me ma'am what with respect to the revolution. So far we have discussed the revolution with respect to the first sector. Which is the first sector ma'am? Textile. Yes or no? Second is power loom. Third is cotton gin. Fourth is what is the fourth one? Fourth one uh, steam engine. Am I right? Steam engine. Fifth is blast furnace. Am I right? Fifth is blast furnace. And sixth is railways. Look at this. Sixth is railways. In 1814, George Stephenson developed, George Stephenson developed the steam engine to haul coal from mines to ports by railways. The first one happened in 1814 by George Stephenson. Then in 1830, the first railway train, okay, began to carry passengers. This is for, not for the passengers. Is or no? Please be very uh, careful. There is a difference between steer. George Stephenson developed a steam engine to haul coal from mines to ports by railways, but it doesn't carry the passengers. The first railway line which carries the passengers happened only in the year 1830 and it carried passengers and freight both, both from Liverpool to Manchester. These events were followed by a great wave of railroad. railroad. First as happened, the revolution happened in the railways, then they are switching over to the roadways actually. Okay, great wave of railroad construction in England and the United States as early as in 1853. During whose tenure, ma? During whose period? It is in Lord Dalhousie's time. The first railroad was laid in India. Already while I was doing my 1857 revolve, we have discussed what are all taken, what are all the changes, tremendous changes taken place during Lord Dalhousie period. Is or no, my dear friends? Is or no? Next is roadways. So, sixth is the railway, seventh is the revolution in the roadways. What is that? 
the need to transport the raw materials and the manufactured products led to the improvement of the roads and digging of canals in England and other countries. Mac Adam devised the method of making pakka or macadamized roads. Just close your eyes and think of this uh, situation now, especially during the rainy season. Do we have a... <coughs> Does our roads are so clear? Do, do we have a pakka roads? Just imagine ma'am. Yes ma'am. I start a bike. Okay. I start moving from my home. I want to reach the office. It takes double the times. Why? Because of the so good road we have. Yes or no? Ma, the, our roads are so pathetic. It is in so pathetic in condition. Okay. But the first concept of macadamized roads. Mac Adam divides the method of making a pakka road. So the revolution also taken forward in the apart from the railways also it is carried forward in the roadways. Next is canals. To expand the facilities, now in the waterways, railways, roadways, now in the waterways, okay. Because this is the cheapest mode of transport. Yes or no, my dear friends, to expand the facilities for transport by water, much cheaper than overland England began connecting river and lakes with the canal. Yes, the cheapest way, now they are focusing on the cheapest mode of transport. Canal building spread to Europe and America and was big help in providing cheaper transportation, especially after the steamboats came into use. Yes, steamboats fitted with the steam engines. Yes or no? The power boats. Once we have already made a revolution in the power steam engine. Yes, now we can accelerate the speed. Apart from that, now we will also making a canal building which has helped to spread to Europe and America and was providing a big help in providing a cheaper transportation. Postal revolution. As of now, how many marks? How many revolutions? Six is uh, railways, seven is roadways, eight is canal. Okay, eight is seven is roadways. Very important mark. Eight is canals or waterways. Nine is a very interesting postal revolution. What is this? Improved transportation helped in carrying the messages as well as the people and the goods. Yes or no? This is already taken carried by the railways, roadways, cheaper. This is all fine. We have reached the um, improvement in the transportation. But Roland, trying to remember this personality name, Roland Hill's idea of penny post. What is this penny post? In such a way, fast and cheap communication by the letter began to operate in England in the early 19th century. Soon it was adapted in other countries including India. People could thus send letters to and from all parts of the country at the same low rate regardless of the distance. Yes, or you, or you, you wanted to place an order, you wanted to make an order, you need a communication, then only the business will be developed. Yes or no, what is the communication? The first communication is this happening in terms of connectivity is that Roland Hill's idea of penny post system. Business concern took advantage of the penny post in their buying and selling transaction far and near. Yes or no ma? So the distance is not a matter here. Why? Because of the revolution which has happened in terms of the connectivity, accessibility. Okay, connectivity, they have used the transportation in order to reach, you wanted to make buying and selling other things, the business. This is one of the major things in business which has taken care by the postal revolution. Next is agricultural revolution, a very, very important. Tenth, am I right? Tenth or ninth? Ninth is, yes, I am right. Ninth is postal. Tenth is an agricultural revolution. Farm mechanization. Please do remember, this is one of the major changes has happened in the agricultural revolution. There was a revolution in agriculture also. The revolution in agriculture, in fact, that started before the industrial revolution itself. Okay, it is not that only after industrial revolution, the people started, yes ma, the people started thinking, yes, the agricultural revolution, because we were using a what type of agriculture subsistence, using obsolete technology. Yes or no, our agriculture is like a majority of the time it is subsistence in agriculture, so that they wanted to bring the changes in that. Naturally, there were changes in farming methods to produce more food and more importantly, they are diverting from producing more food crops to cash crops. Why? Because it is commercial. 
Yes or no, my dear friends? Because only if they concentrate on growing more cash crops, they can earn profit. Yes or no, cash crop for the market and the raw materials for the industries. So, they are, there is initially agriculture itself, the very strong point we will remember, we will focusing only on the food and paddy cultivation, wheat cultivation, isn't it? Food process. Whereas, produce more food crops. This has got changed that reduction in the food crops and which is replaced by increasing growth in the cash crops and raw materials. Okay. So, this is a quantum jump. This is a change. So, this is a first revolution which has taken place with respect to the agriculture. Next is that new form machinery replace the manual farmers uh, labor work. For example, new form machinery included the steel plow, steel plow and harrow for breaking the ground, the mechanical drill for seeding and horse drawn cultivator to replace the hoe. See, initially cultivation has been done by hoe, now which has been replaced by horse drawn cultivator. Seeding is a manual action. You just remember during Pongal time and other time, the farmers, they used to sow the seed. Yes or no? It is purely a manual action. It is a labor work which has got replaced by the introduction of mechanical drill for seeding. Apart from that, even for a very new form machinery included steel plow and harrow for breaking the ground. Initially, first you have to convert the ground. Yes or no? You should be make the, you should uh, Convert the land in such a way that it is suitable for doing the cultivation. So, it is like a pre-production work. Like in cinemas, we used to say, you know, post-production, pre-production. Such like, before you start the cultivation, the ground has to be tilled. The land has to be tilled. For which they are using a steel plow and harrow, which has to expedite the process. And even for machines for reaping and threshing. What is this mark? Finally, the paddy crops, the food crops, they used to be reaped. You could have seen the farmers, they will be doing this reaping and threshing. Just they will be enjoying the the work by singing song, normal folk clothes, everything. This is our culture. Yes or no? In order to reduce their, in order to uh, relieve themselves from the hard manual work. Now, all these things that got replaced by machine. Yes or no? We have, they have introduced a machine for plowing. See here. For plowing steel plow, harrow for breaking the ground and for seeding, sowing the seeds. We have a mechanical drill to a hoe for cultivation. Okay, horse drawn cultivator to replace the hoe. There were also machines for reaping and threshing. Then where is the work for the human? Where is the work for the human? All the human works has been replaced by the so-called technology revolution or by the introduction of the machines. Yes, ma'am. Very good afternoon. Next is a crop rotation. This is a 11th revolution. Yes or no? Of course, this is a part of an agricultural revolution. Farmers adopted the intensive manuring and the practice of crop rotation to maintain the soil fertility. Yes, see, you are doing the same crop after for all the three seasons, like growing rice, harvesting is done. Again, after one or two months, again, you are growing rice and again grows means it is a monocropping. Same crop is repeated in fashion means it will not add to the soil fertility, whereas it will lead to soil infertile, depletion of the soil. Yes or, no? yes or no, it will take all the mineral resources. That's why the crop has to change. For once, if you are making a, a rice crop, rice, then for the next season, you go for some other like pulses, bajra, whatever it is. Try to replace, change the crops in rotation. Replace the monocropping with the crop rotation. That is one of the best, best method to maintain or increase the soil fertility. The later is the practice of changing the crop on a piece of a land each year. For example, first year you are making a wheat or rice to next year you change it to barley clover and so on instead of letting the land lie fallow every third year and was done in the middle ages crop rotation is an effective because different crops take different elements from the soil yes or no does all crops require the same amount of elements no some will be more water intensive water intensive yes or no for example paddy and wheat you say me which requires more uh, more number of uh, water 
obviously it is a paddy okay so it differs the crop each from each crop there is a difference in acquiring and taking of the different elements from the soil moreover planting a crop like clover can actually be better for the soil than letting it like fallow because clover is one of the plants that add fertility to the soil is this fine next land consolidation a very very important land consolidation what do you remember enclosure movement what is this enclosure movement in yesterday's class we have discussed a very important point <coughs> land consol land consolidation land owners in england also began to enlarge their farms they had already consolidated their holdings through the enclosure movement yes or no Yes, a big landlord is there. A big zamindar is there. He is having a thousand acres of a land adjacent to thousand acres of his land. From this stretch to that stretch, a poor marginal farmer, a petty farmer who is holding an under hundred acre just next to the big zamindars. Now this zamindar, he is having a voice in the par. He will be um, having a good voice in the parliament. Now he wanted to acquire the little, very little portion or which is owned. by the marginal farmers by either they will take it by force or by paying them a very meager amount this is called an enclosure movement the owner of the land who is the owner of a land the marginal farmers now he is being pulled to work as a labor in the factory is yes or no because he is turned unemployed on giving away he didn't voluntarily give definitely this will not happen okay that land has been forcefully taken from him and now he has been forced to the situation of a very pathetic condition that he has been from the owner he has been forced to a cheap labor is all of this is a sad plight we have discussed in yesterday's class as you have read before not before just yesterday's class i have explained you the strips of land that they lay scattered about the village were so consolidated that they could hold all their land in one piece in doing so the big land owner acquired and fairly unfairly it is not a fair action at all unfairly get got possessions of the peasants small holding along with this home is this clear ma is this clear next is sometimes big land holders took over the common meadow in a village also leaving the small land owners and the tenants with no pasture at all not only the cultivating land even they'll grab the small common meadow okay but the big land owners controlled the parliament in those days they had a big voice in the parliament and got laws passed that enabled them to do these things whatever they want they can get it done because they had a good voice in the parliament i think that's a really it's an unfair thing na it's really very unfair the result was that the peasants were forced off the land of the land they were sent out of the land the being from Mama owner now they have been pushed to a very uh, pathetic condition to the cheap labor they are going and standing in front of the factory system in search of a job okay with no other means of livelihood they moved to the new industrial towns and cities where they got jobs at whatever wages the factory owner would pay do you think that the factory owner will give him the decent amount of salary no they are taking this plight of the farmers their disadvantages as an advantage for them instead of paying them 1000 rupees for an example i'm saying instead of paying them 500 rupees as a wages he will negotiate to him that i'll be giving only 100 rupees willing you come and join if not many are waiting there okay they were looking for the job opportunity so it is like something better than nothing rather than being zero without any single penny in the hand these owners actually they were owners okay now they have been pushed to the condition of a labor they have accepted this which this is really a sad thing okay industries that benefited which has promoted the capitalism but at the what cost at the for small farmers extra expense industries the capitalistic mode of production the industries grows not ethically unethically by at the cost of the small farmers is or no ma is this clear can you visualize industrial revolution in other countries before that how many revolutions has happened a small sum up how many revolution so far one topic we completed just first revolution first revolution takes place in what please say me textile industry is or no textile industry try to bring the four point second in power loom third third cotton gin 
fourth fourth steam engine am i right am i right my dear friends what is in the fifth fifth has happened then revolution has happened then uh, blast furnace blast furnace yes what is the sixth sixth then railway seventh is roadways eighth is waterways that is canal building waterways canal building did i miss out anything <laughs> ninth in agricultural revolution here that is an introduction of machinery then many such things we have is or no ma is or no land consolidation is the 10th yes land consolidation is the 10th so the next part we are going to this can you try to make a short answer from today try start writing an answer taking this as a second question yesterday we had one question why industrial revolution first began in england how many of you have made an attempt to write an answer i have also helped you with the side headings is or no ma is or no blast furnace railway crop rotation super so 10 10th is the land consolidation will you try to make a short notes what are all the revolution revolution during industrial uh, which are all the in which sectors the revolutions has happened during the ir so take this as a question and start writing a short note the more you write answers then only you are getting ready for the mains because mains is really challenging my dear friends please don't take it for granted over to the next the third segment we are going to discuss in today's classes Industrial revolution in other countries. First thing is that it started in an island, as or no, a small. From England, it spread towards other parts of the country, as or no. In the continent of the Europe, the industrial revolution began to make some headway after 1815, after the defeat of Napoleon and the end of 23 years of war in Europe. In the continent of the Europe, it is taking place only after 1815. Then that too, after the defeat of Napoleon, that was a long end, that long war going, going, going. Everyone was looking when the war will end. It is a never-ending war. Finally, it had ended after a 23 years struggle or a battle. Then machines were introduced in France, Belgium, Switzerland, and Germany. However, unstable government. Does England have this problem? Can anyone fill the comment box? What are all the six points we have discussed with respect to a small re uh, quick recap, so that you will understand this easily? Okay, ma. What are the six benefits England possess with respect to why industrial revolution first happened in England? First, that overseas trade. Am I right? Overseas trade. This was the first side heading we have discussed. Second is that natural resources, abundant of natural resources in terms of in terms of raw materials. Is or no? Both coal. And iron ore existed side by side. Is or no, my dear friends? What is the third? Political government, political stable system. Yes or no? Yes. More colonies acquired more colonies, which has used these colonies for acquiring the raw materials as well as for. selling the finished products it is also used them as a markets for selling the finished products what are the other things ma i think overseas trade natural resources uh, political stable government and uh, natural acquired colonies so these are the major things did i miss out anything did i miss out anything no it's a quick recap coming to here here the problem is that the machines were introduced in france belgium switzerland and germany however unstable government is a problem and unrest
increased among the people in some of these countries slow the growth of industries for some time yesterday one example i have given no you have hell lot of problem in your home okay but you may be the ceo of a company you have a very good we have you have a very important meeting okay but you will not be able to discharge your work properly why because your mind is already blocked you are you have a problem at home the similar way unstable government is a problem for the other european nations next with respect to france what is the pro what the problem why there is a late entry what is the reason for the france to come as a late entry in ir it came by 1850 only why was developing the iron industry though she has to import both iron ore and coal for france can we say she is deficient of raw materials she is good in production okay she is good in making the end product but she is deficient of raw materials for the raw materials she has forced to import it from the neighboring places ah uh, shipping industry yes next is what is the problem with respect to germany germany entered only by 1865 i told you, you know for germany there is a two problem one is that first it has to set right its own problem unification of germany germany has already got split is or no so they were just busy in the unification of germany after that it occupied the second place as a producer of a steel but with england far ahead in the lead though germany is giving a tough fight to england after the unification it is also possessed a second place in the producer in the steel production but then also by the time england is always far ahead far ahead in the lead after a late start germany's industrial development took an amazing leap after 1870 when the german states were finally welded into one nation which is nothing but unification of germany soon germany was to become an england rival so far there was no unopposed party yes or no england was an unopposed candidate nobody to oppose him no rivalries at all so he was happily in extending the colonies acquiring the raw materials selling the finished product exam shipping industry transportation everything is against he feel that he is the most blessed god's blessed kid but now after some time germany is trying to give a tough lead for him is pushing back yes after the unification is done for germany now next is what is the reason for the russia why russia has made a late entry was the last of the big european powers very sad russia is a very big place very big country but it was the last of the big european powers to have an industrial revolution why she was rich in mineral resources but lacked in the capital and the cheap labor see she does the resources raw material is the problem for her no she is very good in coal iron ore and everything but she majorly lacked in the capital and the free labor for england the free labor the cheap labor she can take it from the colonies is or no but for russia that is not and above all the investment investment capital and free labor was a challenge in front of russia she has to set right that and it took for her some more long time to jump into the so called industrial revolution after she freed the serbs in 1861 she obtained capital from the foreign countries and russian industry moved ahead however it was only after russia revolution october revolution 1917 that rapid industrial development took place actually the rapid industrial development took place only after the proper october revolution or the russian revolution is this clear ma what is the reason for the united states what might be the reason for the united states united states has introduced the machines and started factories before 1800 after gaining independence from england as yes or no yes end of civil war and it is like by 1860 she had well established the textile steel and the shoe industries the american industries grew very rapidly only after by 1870 is this clear ma united states many many into years the superpower the so called today hero who is that usa but he was the one who has entered first everyone has to set right their own problem then only they can come out okay but england only he was a she was a beautiful angel with no problem during the industrial revolution is yes or no and for her, what is the problem of united states it is like end of a civil war last this is your mains question 
Japan was the first country in Asia to industrialize. Traditionally, Japan produced mainly such articles as silk, porcelain and toys. By the end of the 19th century, Japanese production included steel, machinery, metal goods and chemicals and in large quantities and in quantities large enough for export. So, Japan is the late entry. Of course, in Asia is the first country to industrialize. What is the concern? They focus mainly on the silk. Of course, they had a very good fine quality silk, porcelain toys. By the end of 19th, Japanese production included then only. By the end of 19th century, it was pretty long time. Okay. Because I have started in the 1718 itself. End of 19 only, it has started produ producing steel, machinery, metal goods and chemicals. And in quantities large enough for export. Tariff barriers. What is this? As England was the first country where industries were developed, as you know, she gained almost complete control over the world market. Even when people in other countries began to use machines, they found they could not compete with England low prices. For England, reducing the prices, she doesn't face any problem. Why? By the time already she is a superhero. Heroine. Okay, for an example, we are saying it is a very competitive cine industry. Cinema is a very competitive industry. Okay, you know, we it's a very challenging uh, place. We takes a, a lot of struggle, hard work, and above all, so many other things, other factors uh, plays the role. Now, a new entry, a new uh, heroine into a field. Okay, a new a new phase uh, introduction. By the time the new heroine got introduced and already an existing star is there, will, will the new entry can give a tie, uh, tough fight to the already star who, who, is, who is shining like a star in the industry? Will it be possible for her to give a tough fight? The same problem the other countries faced when they find tough to give a tough fight to the England's low price because they can't reduce the prices. The other countries, then if they reduce the prices, means they will face is a loss okay but for England that is not a problem because it has already established the market see it has captured the world market even when people in other countries began to use missions they found they could not compete with or they could not match up with the prices which is being given by the England is on Oma to help keep, keep these low priced products from coming into the markets, many countries introduce the protective tariff. Yes, no, no, no. You just please make a protective tariff. Why? If not, the England's product will flood our country. Okay, because we are giving it a very cheap cost of price. It will not affect them. They are already established. Now only we are stepping into that. We are in the budding stage, in the nascent stage. So we want you to introduce the protective tariffs. That is the government pass the laws that require the payment of such a high tax on imported British manufacturers that similar products made locally sold more as they were cheaper. The levy of tariffs to protect new industries become a widespread practice. The new industries can't make a can't give a tough fight with the industries already being carried by the England. So in order to safeguard that, in order to care. Uh, uh, in order to check this things, they are asking for the, they are requesting the government to make for the protective tariffs. Is or no ma? This is simple. Next is a raise for raw material. This you have to focus more. Why means initially the search for markets and the sources. These are the two things. One is that source for raw materials. Where do we get coal? Where do we get iron ore? These are the sources for the raw materials because these are the two raw materials. Then you got the raw material, you processed it. The, uh, after processing, it is ready. The finished product is ready to sell in the markets. The second thing is that you want to sell it. Fine. The search. Always there is a search for two things. One is for the market, for the end product and another for the source of raw materials resulted in international rivalries. Initially, England was without any rivalry, unopposed candidate. Now, do you remember who has become, who has started giving a tough fight to England? Germany in steel making. Yes or no? 
Yes or no? Now, first England, later other Western countries began to look for new sources of raw material and market for their manufacturers. Yes or no? For the manufacturing processes, first raw material is required. Okay? They can't. They have already used the raw material which is there in their domestic place, in their exist, in their places. Apart from this, they are also started importing it. So there was a big fight is going for search of raw materials as well as for the markets. Towards the end of the 19th century, Japan was industrialized, yes, and joined the race, yes, the first Asian to join the race for the colonies, race for the colonies. In this race, almost the entire non-industrialized world was carved into colonies. The spheres of influence all territories for economic and political domination by industrialized country. So, only two groups now. One is the industrialized country who are Another one is non-industrialized countries. Industrialized country, beginning only England was there. So, there was no tough fight. But after some times, after the end of American Civil War, Russia, after uh, Serbdom, abolition of Serbdom, then there is an entry of France, Japan, Germany, everyone. Now, for this industries, many, many European countries and of course, the Japan has entered it. Now, everyone is in need of a raw material as well as for the market. So, will there be a competition or not? Initially, there was no competition. England was the only one opposed candidate. Now, we are getting facing many rivalries, many rivalries. They all have to find out the raw materials as well as the market. They, they can't take it. Can England take it from Russia or Russia take it from England? No, they are like an equivalent competitor. So, they have to go and look for the non-industrialized countries that they have tried to acquire in terms of a colonies, fear of influence. Is this clear, Ma? Are you able to visualize? Thus arose the concept of, so-called concept of imperialism, under which imperialism, probably I'll be doing in the next month, I'll start all other topics, okay? Thus arose Thus arose imperialism. What is this imperialism under which a strong nation like England, like Germany subordinates the economies of the countries under their domination to their own interest. For example, let us take two, two what is this concept imperialism, okay? One is that strong nation, let us take England. Another one is the colony, who is that? Let us take Africa. Okay, England is an industrialized, Africa is a non-industrialized. Yes or no, my dear friends? What is this concept? In, uh, what is this concept imperialism under which the strong nations? Who is the strong nations? England subordinate the economies of the countries. So the economy of the Africa, in terms of the growth, everything is being taken care by. It comes under the subjugation. It comes under the ambit of whom? The strong nation under the domination of their own interest. It comes under the it comes under the subjugation of England. That also the England will not work for the welfare of the Africa. It will utilize the resources, the economy, and the returns for the welfare of England in order to promote the industries. They force them to buy and sell on their own terms. So the Africa has no role or no decision making power in buying and selling. Everything comes under the ambit of the strong nation industrialized. For example, England. The race for colonies. Now, where race for colonies caused many an international conflict. The countries which had been industrialized laid had no colonies at all. For example, from Asia, Japan is the first entry. Of course, it is a late entry. Yes or no? By the time Japan entered, see, initially we had only one superhero. Okay? So, always the hero means definitely he will be only uh, Rajni Gant. We remember like this. Okay. That time any movie, hero will be same, heroine will be different. Okay. So, after some times, after Rajni Gant alone not, now many heroes is there in the cine industries. Okay. There is a tough competition. By the time, by the time, by the upcoming new heroes come, already there is a tough fight going with all the existing mass heroes. Now, this colonies, they get the, even you might have a talent, you might, even you might have a potential caliber, everything, but there is no space for you to venture. Why? Because already full. 
as of now see the race for colonies initially there was no race for colonies england alone was playing a one man role after some time into this industrial revolution the russia france germany everything as a uh, all other nations have started coming in by the time the countries which are been industrialized laid for example japan had no colonies at all if there is no colonies where will they get their raw materials where will they sell their finished products market because already the everything it has been acquired by the tough fight in the colonies wanted to wrest them from those of that they had as so no are you able to visualize countries which had colonies wanted still more this side like this one problem is going for the late entry it is a problem already they don't find the colonies one more problem is going that countries which had colonies for example england remember it under england 10 uh, colonies are there okay under germany five colonies england is not sufficient england is not happy with this 10 colonies let me give you a beautiful example england is having how many colonies under its control for example 10 germany under its control it is happening four it is having four okay like uh, we will uh, we will uh, take japan as an example it is a late entry it is in search for colonies after much struggle he found only one okay there is a huge disparity now this is one problem this is one tough competition is going with respect to the late entries apart from that the already having the england is not happy with this 10 he wanted to increase it to 15 germany wanted to increase it to 10 see the colonies the countries which had colonies wanted still more then where is the colonies for the new entries for the late comers are able to visualize ma are able to visualize from village to the city the revolution has changed the entire life upside down before ir most of the population of the world lived in village and was dependent on agriculture is or no is or no before ir what ir has led to ir has led to i u m what is this i u m industrial revolution led to urbanization urbanization led to modernization before i r there is no i u m there was only it is purely rural agrarian totally it is an agricultural dependent real india live in its village it is said by mahatma gandhi ji yes or no almost all economic needs of a man were met within the village itself almost the entire population was in one way or the other connected with the land they have a close affinity with the land they don't know any other job other than cultivation they don't need to go for anywhere outside in search of for anything they need not go out of their village whatever their life is such a simple life that they were happily living they were purely agrarian they don't know any such a technology advancement revolutions nothing it was such a plain life but after the adv advent of industrial revolution the towns and cities that had risen since the beginning of the civilization were as you have been centers of craft and political and administrative control trade was carried on between towns and cities of the same country and of other countries and affected only a very small percentage of the population so after the ir only a particular group of segments particular group of people is up witnessing a profit okay the majority of the people lies in the village with the growth of industrialization the picture was completely transformed what is that the center of economy life shifted to cities from village it is shifted to city life so the advent of urbanization is or no is or no the center of economic life shifted to cities the new cities and the towns that grew were important more as a centers of industry that as a political and administrative centers the new cities and towns that grew were important more as a centers of industry centers of industry than as a political and administrative during ancient and medieval time if any place is grown it will be politically important or administrative centers or admin administrative capitals whereas after ir the new cities and towns have been taken consider for as centers of industry okay 
a large part of the population now started living in cities where thousands of people worked in industrial establishment. Large part of the population started living in cities. Earlier, the entire population residing only in the village. Now, majority of the population is witnessing a migration. Moving from the village towards the city, especially they started working near the industrial establishments. Is or no, this population was not connected with the land. Now, in some industrialized country, less than 20% of the population is connected with the land. From 100, it has dropped down to 20% of the population only is connected with the land. In our country, though still an overwhelming majority lives in villages, there is a gradual increase in the population dependent on industry. Highly industrialized country, the share of industrial production in the total national income is far larger than that of an agriculture. Yes or no, ma? You remember primary sector, secondary, tertiary. We know in the primary sector, which is the most as of India, of course, tertiary. Okay, primary. More than 67 percentage of the population live in villages. We are dependent on agriculture. Yes or no? But the percentage GDP ratio, ratio from agriculture and allied sectors, it is not more than 15 percent. Yes or no? It is less than 15 percent. See? But more than closer to 70 percentage of the population dependent on agriculture. This is a sad thing. So, India did not focus on the secondary. That's why we have a problem. Still, we are remaining as a developing India only, developing nation. There was a quantum jump from the primary to the tertiary. Yes or no? Yes or no? Urban and rural economy have become mutually dependent and complementary. So, this is a quantum shift from the life of the village to the life of towns and cities. The crowding of people into cities have always produced See, village, how your life will be well aerated, very good, pure life, okay. Now we are moving into town, into cities, just imagine your life in the cities. Let us take now the present example only, how the housing will be. The cities has always produced the problems of housing, health and sanitation, yes or no. So, we have to spend more on this Primary sectors, yes or no, health and sanitation, housing, health and sanitation. The quickening pace of industrialization in England created deplorable, please try to use the same word in your exam, deplorable living condition, concentration in a smoky industrial towns and city slums grew worse. There is a growing of slum. Please look at this. So, it has led to the deplorable living condition, concentration in a smoky industrial towns and city slums grew worse. So, the life in the towns and city is not that clean, pure and fruitful that they had in the village. Even though the movement of the people from the village to cities has been going on since civilization began. But it has always aroused sadness. Life for village in the city resulted in the many social strains. Many social bonds were dissolved. Yes or no, ma? A simple example. Just let us have some general discussion. Okay? Because this is a history class. Rural, urban. Okay? Now, how many of you love to live in the village? How many of you wanted to live in a life in a village? How many of you enjoy the village atmosphere, village culture, village ambience and other such things? How many of you love to live the life in the hi-fi modern, modern tech towns and cities? Yes, ma'am. Multiplex, these industries, establishment, theatres and other things. This is with respect to the comfort. Second is with respect to the so-called social bond, unity, humanity, morality, ethics. It got dissolved here. Why? Because here we are living in such a congested lifestyle. We don't even know who is next, to, who is the person who is residing in your opposite flat. Who is residing next to you. Opposite, because we, we function like an independent unit. We don't even bother about others. At the maximum, if anything happened to them, we don't voluntarily go and support. Yes or no? Because it is a city life, culture. 
more or more self centered whereas if you imagine the life in the rural if somebody has got some problem the entire village or the entire community will gather is or no you feel that the human support the pillar they found as a social bond the culture the moral the ethics everything they have pulled to their pillars whereas that is totally got dissolved or diluted in the city life we become more of concentrated self self centered and many moral restraints which live which life in village community imposed broke down is or no on the other hand men become free to develop their capabilities yes it has both in my organization class itself i have discussed about uh, both the positive that is impact impact in both the ways both the positive as well as negative the industrial revolution brought countries and peoples together the relationship between the countries and the people however were not based on quality as the industrially developed countries began to control the economy of the countries which were not industrially developed is yes or no we have already discussed industrial countries they are taking acquiring the position of non industrialized countries is yes or no by the concept of imperialism please look at this the economy see the industrially developed countries began to control the economy of the countries which were not industrially developed in spite of this the ir industrial revolution created international consciousness among the people because the development in one place began to influence the development in other oh all of a sudden the italy okay let us take france it was before industrial revolution it has had only a normal economic growth now after getting a uh, advent in self in uh, the industrial revolution its growth is tremendous so this news is reaching the other countries other nations why can't we also step into the industrial revolution why can't we also increase our growth will it lead to international consciousness or not on seeing the success of someone among the people because the development in one place began to influence the development in other places next is industrial capitalism what is this the system of a society which came into being as a result of industrial revolution may be termed as industrial capitalism the main classes in this only two group who are they capitalists who is a capitalist owners of the means of the production is or no they wanted more more and more more profit with low investment is or no my dear friends this is a core objective of capitalistic mode of production see they want more profit but they don't want to uh, invest more also with the less investment with the less cheap labors okay they are focused concerned only on their profit workers workers who worked for a wages mere wages that to cheap wages low wages as a cheap laborers is or no next is impact of industrial revolution very very important of course we are nearing the end part please try to make a short note with respect to impact of industrial revolution from ir itself we can expect the some set of three questions one is that first is why industrial revolution why industrial revolution first occurred in or first happened in england this is already asked in your upsc mains 2013 second is that what are all the technology what are all uh, in which sectors revolution has happened or which are all the sectors which are uh, revolution has happened okay revolution this is the second probable question we have a set of revolution happened in 10 third is that from england from england how ir spread to other countries how i r spread to other countries and what is the reason spread to other countries or this also like a late comer japan this also have already asked in your previous years mains question the last but not least most important is impact of industrial revolution very very important much expected even for the coming year this is the question we can expect from the 
industrial revolution because they have already asked about the late entry they have already asked about why industrial revolution was took in england they didn't ask about impact of industrial revolution so there is a more chances for this part so please start writing an answer on this okay at the end of today's discussion now Britain's economy came to be dominated by the industrial sector, yes or no, rather than the agriculture sector. So, Britain economy is a Britain is an industrialized country. First is second, boosted the exports and conversely import of raw materials. Next, urban area became the centers of production rather than the centers for trade and administration i told you know there was a uh, coming of more new towns and cities but they didn't function as for the political or administrative purpose they have functioned as an industrial towns urban area become the centers of production but it also led to so these are the three positive or we can say it is an impact means always doesn't mean that it should talk only about the negative both the positive and the negative now the negatives are more negative impact please make this very sure negative impacts of ir what is that first is crowding in cities which led to the problem of housing and sanitation yes or no why because there was a migration of people from the village towards the cities why in order to get into the factory system yes or no so there is a quantum there was a 360 degree change of lifestyle pattern from the village towards the cities which has led to the crowding in cities which has led to the problem of housing and sanitation Second is the aim was to maximize the profit and that the wages of workers were paltry, cheap wages, cheap labor. Why? Who wanted to make uh, maximize the profit? Who wanted to maximize the profit now? The capitalistic mode. What is the capitalistic mode of production? Industrial capitalism. Capitalism itself is a concept of they wanted to they focus more on only the profit with low investment and low wages. Yes or no? Now industrial capitalism same they are focusing more on maximizing the profits, minimizing the wages of the labors. Next is the third. In order to do this, you are focusing on recruitment of children and women child labor and participation of women in labor force increased yes or no this is the direct repercussions or this is the direct consequences with respect to ir yes or no my dear friends child labor increased why because for example for an adult one day wage if you have to give a 200 rupees means for a child it is enough if you give him 80 rupees but you can ask me ma'am then the child uh, does it do, do the lesser work no my dear friends the child if you're doing the work equal to the adult the thing is that they don't have the negotiation power in fact they don't know the rights at all okay whatever they have been paid because it's a poverty only is making them to go and work as a labor they are not that much aware about how much they have to bargain or they have asked for so the industries are more calculated the industrialist or the capitalist are more calculated in recruiting the child and women in the labor force as they were available at a cheaper wages yes or no little was done for the social security of the workers very 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 sad thing is that the working condition is very dangerous and even the welfare the labor union the labor welfare union now we have too much of the labor laws yes or no the protection and the social security welfare measures that was those things what it is available now was not found during the first industrial revolution security for the workers plus working condition the factories was so pathetic it was so dark and it was like unhygienic sanitation not even a proper ventilation congested every day has to work for 15 hours okay in the smoky condition that led to the development of the resentment and many workers movement ascended okay and uh, many worker movement hastened the arrival of socialism 
So these are the thing it further resulted into. Please look into this industrial revolution. Of course, less mortality, agricultural revolution, communications, machinery, improvement in trade with the colonies. These are all the just what we have discussed so far. Further resulted into what? Now we are discussing about the impact. Yes or no? It further resulted into increased contract between the industrialized and the non-industrialized world. Next, demand for raw materials and export market made the colonial power to look for more territories to colonize. The greedy person, they wanted to become more and more. They are not happy with what? England, for example, if he is already having 10, he is not happy with that. He wanted to colonize more. He wanted to bring more countries under his control. So, the demand for the raw material. Why? Because he is establishing the, he is expanding his establishments with respect to the industry. So, he is in need of more raw materials and export or for the finished products markets. 19th century witnessed a race for colonies among the among the European nation, which has led for the imperialism. Race for the colonies, yes, yes or no, because more of industry industrialized countries. And thus, industrial revolution played an important role in the emergence of imperialism. Yes or no? So can I say IR has led to the outcome of imperialism yes or no yes or no my dear friends which has led to the important role in the emergence of imperialism whereby the colonial powers try to establish much stronger control over the colonies not only by use of military power direct rule and rule by intermediaries in terms of everything their economy the administration everything comes under the Power, okay, for England, with respect to Africa and England, Africa can't take any decision of its own with respect to trade, with respect to communication, with respect to everything, it will be complete control under England. England will use this military power, direct rule and rule by the intermediaries. Industrial capitalism, consequences, IZ, it resulted in the concentration of economic powers in the few and just remember in our Indian constitution, in our DPSP, Directive Principles of State Policy, we have an article which talked about prevention of concentration of wealth in a fewer hands. Yes or no? Can anyone say me what is an article which talks about prevention of concentration of wealth in a fewer hands? In our Indian constitution, we have the safeguard. Our constitutional safeguard is there for the prevention of concentration of wealth in the fewer hands. Yes or no, my dear friends? Which? Where do we have that? The, it resulted in the concentration of the economic power in the few hands. The independent craftsmen become rare. Why? This crafts industry, the traditional article, traditional industries, craftsmanship, everything has got abolished because there was a complete shift from the village life towards the towns and the cities. Small number of capitalists came to control the lives of not only the large number of workers from whom they employed, but also directly or indirectly the economic life of the entire society. So the entire society comes under the clutches of the so-called new entry. It is like a factory system. Is on no? Yes or no, they have to forget about their village life system. Now they have completely moved to the city, town. The concentration of economic power in few hands has resulted in the shocking social inequalities and created a wide gulf between the capitalist and the rest of the population. So such a sad thing is that it has created a wide gulf. Who? Capitalists, they are the leading, okay, concentration because the entire money are in the pockets of the capitalists, the production and the wages, the poor people, this created a huge social inequalities between, shocking social inequalities and created a wide gulf between the capitalists and the majority of the population. Yes or no, my dear friends? rest of the population, these inequalities were so obvious and so great that Disraeli, British Prime Minister of the 19th century, spoke of the existence of two nations in England, 
the rich and the poor yes the out out the openly talked about the their existence of a two nation one is a rich yes the rich is becoming rich and richer the poor is swept the poor are becoming more poorer because of this it is benefiting the few and it is affecting the many is or no the industrial revolution produced a vast number of landless why through enclosure movement tallless workers who were totally dependent on an employer is or no they had to accept whatever wages the employer offered they can't bargain they lose the negotiation power for there were usually more workers than jobs women and children were employed even in the mine hazard was industries because they could be hired for less money is is it is this all acceptable ma is this all acceptable often they had to work from 15 to 18 hours oh my god i think they are preparing for civil service examination even the civil service examination students we don't recommend them to read for 15 to 18 hours how hard it is with no rest period see your dl mom is saying you one day you go for a break definitely you should take one day break but for mm-hmm. them there is no rest period every day it is like a monotonous repetitive in nature hard job they has to go for 15 to 18 hours unimaginable okay if per chance they fell asleep on duty because the small little ones okay and the women normally they don't have that much humility power and the little ones the kids uh, because of the strenuous work they do it, doing it for a continuous 12 hours and 15 hours if they become tired and knowingly or unknowingly if they fall asleep on duty they might be beaten up somebody will be one uh, headman will be uh, moving from here and there okay he having a big bamboo stick in his hand if he find some kids or a woman who was uh, sleeping on duty that's it he used to come and beat them so badly so badly they might be beaten up by heartless overseer working surroundings were unsafe and dirty children were employed to pull coal carts so we can't see is not standing erect does it standing on a stool is no he has been purely he has been very badly treated like an animal like pulling cart see in place of an animal or a machine they have used a kid a children to pull the coal carts how sad it is housing how the housing condition will be how the housing position the houses provided for workers were no better do they have a good uh, uh, good class system or a good uh, hostel no all areas of the industrial cities where workers lived were crowded slums with lack of water they don't have a proper drainage they don't have a proper drinking water they don't have a good toiletry systems <laughs> everything accidents prone to accident diseases epidemics were very common in a unhealthy hygienic situation environment a report on the slums of manchester in 1837 mentioned among other things that almost all inhabitants of many streets per- perished in cholera then can you can you imagine how badly their life would have been majority of them have lost their life like now we are losing our life because of the covid corona is or no they many of them have lost their life because of the cholera when this dengue cholera malaria when we, we when we will be open to prone to these diseases when we have a poor drainage when we have a poor sanitation when we have a poor expenditure very few a very less expenditure on the health and the san- sanitation is or no can we imagine our life see already they are working for 15 to 18 hours not even a rest they don't have a enough break period apart from that see how much of the pollution air pollution this one picture is a million dollar picture which gives us a vivid picture about the life during the industrial revolution is or no my dear friends is or no can you visualize do we have a social security no social security if an employer was displeased with a worker for any reason he could dismiss the worker at the will see there will be one overseer okay let us remember let us imagine there will be one supervisor the supervisor his role is not to do a work his role is to supervise the laborers okay if he has even like a one per person 
uh, whatever reason it might be okay for personal reason or whatever it is if he is not okay with that particular labor means he can send him at any point of time so that there is no job security at all a worker had little choice but to accept an employer's term or be jobless if he was ill and unable to work he got no pay loss of pay and he might be discharged if you are ill you you can say ma'am today i am not well okay i need to take rest i need to take rest hi hi munazir hi i need to take rest okay can you give me a leave i am saying that no there is no leave there is no rest for you there is no break for you we are a human the machine is working it okay we are not a machine we require a break but this is not being done okay he got no pay even he ha if he if see for example one week means if he is coming for job for six days only one day is asking for a leave means he will not be granted leave and moreover they will he will not be paid for that also if he suffer if he suffered an accident on the job he got no help from the employer for example while handling the big machines it was so big so big and it was a dangerous machine okay dangerous machines while handling the machine if he let us imagine if his hand got chopped okay he got hurt okay the uh, i mean the industry the employer will not pay for him or the employer will say i am not responsible for that you have to meet out you have to take care of how pathetic it is how it is like it is very disheartening to hear itself okay got no help from the employer not even the help is uh, extended and he would he will also be dismissed from the job saying that disqualified you are not fit to do this work when business was slack a factory owner regularly dismissed during the lean season regularly dismissed as many employees as possible leaving them with no means of livelihood it was the industrial workers in england who first endured conditions such as such as those just described by the workers in other countries fared no better everywhere the same problem everywhere it was the industrial workers in england who first endured the conditions such as those just described they were the they were to describe but the workers in other countries fared no better they are also everywhere if you are working in an industry everywhere the same problem exists next is child labor the horrible condition of the child labor is that it started in the evidence collected by the committee of british parliament in 1816 the committee is submitting a report citing how bad the children were have been affected the following information was collected from one time masters of apprentice in a cotton mill he was asked questions by the committee on the condition of a child labor in his factory see look at him how old he might be hardly he might be 7 to 8 years okay okay 8 to 9 whatever it is but he has to handle a very big machine see look at him does he wearing a slipper no see look at him they are so pathetic the condition is labor loss this is very important a few humanitarian reformers now the time for the reformation and some land owners who were jealous of big businessmen combined with the english workers to get the first laws to improve the condition of the work yes the first voice has raised what is the voice raised in order to bring for the in order to get for the first law for the betterment of the working conditions for the labor what is that when it has happened try to remember please very very important in 1802 in 1802 england passed its first factory act limiting the hours of work for children to 12 a day oh my god working 12 hours even civil service patrons we don't uh, uh, prepare for 12 hours in a day they yes so no but for the little ones seven or eight years old kids they have to work for 12 hours that also they are saying it got limited from 15 to 12 yes so no it got limited from 15 to 12 by first act is 1802 in 1819 law forbade the employment of the children under 9 okay the second act is in force what is that in 1819 they are saying that if the children is less than 9 then they are not you should not employ them in the hazardous Uh, industry so you should not take for the employment fine then you can ask me ma'am if the children above 9 years yes they can take as a labor 
Next is later laws regulated the employment of women and children in the mines. After 1819 only there was a the announcement there was a law in nature that is like employment of women and the children both is regulated and prohibited in the mines in Azad was industries. Is this fine ma? So when first it has happened in 1802, 1819. Try to remember this. Next is with respect to the trade union. Very, very, very important. Friends, please drop a confirmation message. Which topic we are discussing as of now? Which topic we are discussing as of now? Please let me know. We are discussing the most important topic. We are discussing the most important topic, impact. Okay, under impact only these discussions. Many of the laws to protect the workers have been due to the pressure from the workers trade unions. Now they have formed the union. When the English workers first formed the trade unions, employers called them unlawful combinations. Now we have a union. Any factory or any industries you just take, we have a union. As soon as the law union help, the strike will go. Now for the first time, when the English workers first formed the trade unions, on seeing a group of people coming and standing in front of a boss in employer, the employees coming and standing and they are calling them as a union members. On seeing this big uh, combination, a group of people, this fellow, the employer, the boss, the head, is, the capitalist is calling them, come on, who you are all are unlawful combinations, okay? And laws were passed to curb such evils. What are you doing? Why are you making a mass gathering over here? I don't accept this, okay? I will take a severe action against you, against all of you. And laws were passed to curb such evils. They have initially, it has been considered as an evil action. But by 1824, the workers succeeded in getting laws against the unions repealed and there was a remarkable growth in the union for all the trades. Through this, it may be hard to believe today, but it is true. What is the truth? Yes, the English industrial workers did not have the right to vote. If you are a labor, if you are working in a factory, you don't even have a, your voting right is denied. Can we accept like this? In today's scenario, can I say, uh, can I say one simple example? Yes. Or you're working in this particular uh, factory, or you're working in this for, for particular company, you have to give up your voting rights. What the first thing you will ask me, ma'am, voting is my fundamental rights. Okay. Nobody has got the right to take the my fundamental rights or a human rights. It is a for it is given for a, it is a inalienable rights for all the human beings. But that was not the scenario. You believe it or not. For those of the industrial workers who did not have the right to vote in those days. In the beginning, in fact, the population of the new industrial cities had no representation in the parliament at all. No representation. In the beginning, in fact, the population of the new industrial cities, no representation in the parliament at all. In 30s and 40s, later on, okay, 30s and 40s of 19th century only, a new movement has come, like Chartist movement, CM, was launched to get the right of vote for workers. Try to remember what is this mark? Very, very important. Chartist, Chartist movement. What is this movement is all about? This movement was launched to get the right of vote for the workers. Is this fine? Next is, though the movement declined by the 50s of 19th century, left its influence and though the acts of, through the acts of 1867, 82, 1918 and 1929, all adult citizens were enfranchised, right to vote. So, which has set the base for that, which has set the base for that Chartist movement, yes or no? Already we have discussed one movement, enclosure movement, that is not positive, but Chartist movement is a Positive approach, positive action. Is or no? Friends, is this clear? Though the movement declined by the 50s, first, the English workers also won the right not only to organize the trade union, but also they have the right to strike to force employers to concede the demands. Yes, not only to organize. Now, now the English workers have become, come on, gone on those days. Hereafter, I am not going to bow my head in front of you. If there is a deplorable living condition, if the salary is not proper, if you are not going to provide us any social securities, you are not 
not going to give us the right to vote. Now we will raise our voice. Yes, for raising our voice, it is, will not be a single voice. It will be a combination of a workers' voice, all us together, for which we are making a one brand that is called as a trade union. What rights we have under trade unions? Not only to raise the demand, what we are asking for. Apart from that, if you don't concede to us, if you don't agree to that, we will also go for a strike. It will be a mass striking. We are a one band. We are a thousand people. If the entire thousand people refuse to work, how do you run your industry? How do you run your factory? So they started like we will go for a right to strike to force employers to concede the demands. Is or no ma? Next is trade unions in other countries. The idea that the workers case must be heard in any dispute met with the opposition everywhere. Now the capitalists, they can't agree to it. What is this? We can't see this normal employees who is getting salary from us. To, they will uh, talk all these uh, laws and regulations. No, the idea of workers case must be heard in any dispute met with the opposition everywhere. Germany got the right to form labor unions in the late 19th century. Germany got the right to form the labor union. Next, in the United States, where unions were frowned upon for almost a century, workers did not gain full legal rights until the in, in, until the early 20th century. So, the rights started, but it was not given so quickly. It was not given initially. It took little more longer time. Initially, the United States, where unions were formed, upon for almost a century but later on nearly to the end of the 19th and the early 20th century only they have given the legal rights then the right to form union of course it is in our fundamental rights yes or no in a peaceful manner okay to form union to strike and to bargain with the employers on the conditions of work was legalized and this was followed by other laws that brought more benefits to the employees than the right to form the union. Yes, now you have a right to form the union, to strike and to bargain with the employers. Come on, you are giving me only instead of 1000 rupees, you are giving me only 100 rupees. At least you increase the wages to 200 rupees because I am, I am one of the main person in your profit. Okay, because of us only you are seeing the huge production. So now all their rights and demands has got the legal recognition legalize the men the many benefits that workers and all salary people enjoy in most industrialized countries today yes now you talk now you'll ask for pf pension allowance salary incentives etc etc who has set the who has laid the base for that who it is an effort of the workers who have raised the voice during the industrial revolution because of their efforts only it got legalized now now we have a labor union association law social security welfare mechanism everything is or no the many benefits that workers and all salaried people enjoy in most industrialized countries today or due directly or indirectly to the efforts to the to correct the terrible condition that the industrial revolution brought about yes or no ma yes or no now the most important forever is last but not least laser fair laser fair please 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 try to pay much attention for this not only here you you can use this wherever relevant in your essay in your ethics wherever it is okay try to understand this the most important what is this protection for industrial workers could not have taken place without the change in the ideas without the change in the ideas of the responsibilities of the government now two people one is a capitalist who is a capitalist he is an industrialist industrialized capitalism i see next is a people laborer workers so uh, okay cwg can we have like this cwg what is the cwg c is a capitalist big b who is the in between workers who is working for the who is working as a labor in the for the industries okay the government the government is the head of all, is the head of all under the government only all the industries, the factories and every establishments are taking place. Now, 
if the government remain quiet on any riots or any uh, happening inside displacements who is responsible the government has to take the responsibility in order to cut out the riots and other things now the entire power goes in the hands of the capitalist the socialism or concept is that they are asking for the interference of the government the government has to treat for example if a parent has a two kids means the parent should shower their entire love and support equally to both the kids okay they should not show their support treating one in a favor and another one in a dislike manner that is not accept that is not acceptable isn't it the government should infringe in order to if you are aspiring for the egalitarian society equality where the concepts of equality can you expect the concept of equality in the capitalist if you let the private players to take the complete domination of an economy of a nation or a country means what is the role of a government so it is the rise of the socialists they are asking the government to interfere the government has to interfere and regulate the uh, uh, control and authorities of the capitalist okay so this is one uh, side from which side who side from the cap from the socialist without the change in the ideas of the responsibilities of the government the legal laws the regulations cannot happen is yes or no now when the industrial revolution was gaining strength in england and the same was generally true in other countries the growing belief was that government should not interfere with business and industry who is saying this the capitalist is saying this my dear government please do not interfere this is not your role okay i am i have invested in this business i wanted to take the profit i have my own calculations please keep uh, please don't poke your nose in between we keep yourself let aside let us alone you remain a loop okay we know what to do we know how to bring the business this is an aspect of, this is an attitude of whom this is strongly said by which group means the theory known as laissez faire laissez faire means nothing but let us alone who is asking this not the worker not the government the capitalist the businessman and, and industry persons industrial people are they are asking for that allow us to do allow us to make profit let us alone please you don't interfere in this was then a kind of a religion a man capitalist they started following this is a, a principle itself they totally against the government interference is or no this is called laissez faire and capitalism according to the laissez faire idea the businessman should be free to look after his own interest only the unwritten law of supply and demand should determine the size of its own profits only the unwritten law of supply and demand should determine the size of his own profits the same unwritten law would determine the fate of the worker whether he had a job what would be his working condition and salary everything is decided by whom the capitalists okay the famous economist adam smith i think everyone know about him adam smith voiced this idea in 1776 in a book called the wealth of a nation and it has many supporters too is it acceptable ma please tell me can we accept to this can we accept to this adam smith of course the wealth of a nation this lies of it let us alone who is asking this the capitalist okay the laissez faire doctrine was opposed by many people no it is not acceptable gradually almost all the countries came to accept the idea that the state has a legitimate right and duty to regulate the economy the state now is saying when the laissez faire doctrine has become started gaining ground started becoming popular now they are saying almost all the countries came to accept the idea that the state has a right come on you private industries you businessmen you come under the state protection only you can't say the state to yeah let us alone okay the state has a legitimate right and the duty to regulate the economy the factory acts in england and many laws dealing with the economy in all countries were a consequences of this is or no ma'am so today one rarely hears a voice in defense of laser fair is there anyone who is strongly openly supporting for the laser fair can we say tamil nadu government don't interfere in this sterilizer i show don't interfere in this uh, uh, telangana government uh, andhra government please don't interfere in the visa gas leak can anyone say like this 
is it acceptable is it acceptable no it is not acceptable nowhere we can hear this voice in defense of a laissez faire that is a capitalistic mode gradually the state's role in economic development as also has also come to be recognized is or no yes let me check how much last only three more slides this is true particularly of the developing countries that cannot modernize their economies without a comprehensive and the large scale effort on the part of the state in fact in these countries it is the state rather than the private it is the state rather than the private capitalist that is the main agency for economic development who in the developing countries in developing countries state is the main role state plays a main role in the economic growth not as a private partners okay whereas in the developed countries only till now it is a concept of whom it is a private agency industries and the capitalists but wherever the developing country the state plays a major role in the economic development socialism very very important is laser fair is clear ma is laser fair is clear please try to remember this the greatest challenge who is setting as a challenge to the laser fair concept the greatest challenge to the laser fair and to capitalism itself has come from the idea of socialism which grew in the beginning as a reaction against the evil of capitalism against the evil of capitalism the idea appealed particularly to the workers through their struggle now here after now the time has come we can't see the workers suffering they struggling okay through their struggles they were able to achieve more improvement in their living condition however they came to believe that for basic improvement in their life socialism or the complete reordering of the society was essential because socialism concept socialism concept is something working for striving for egalitarian society equality is or no is or no my dear friends the socialism concept is that if you are having four idlis means capitalism eat two for the breakfast keep remaining two for the dinner if there is a socialism if you have four idlis if you one one idli or one and a half idli is enough to fill your stomach the remaining get distributed redistributed with among the other three of your friends that is called socialism equality okay all of us stomach has to get fulfilled not the filling of only one stomach and the remaining three stomach is get, being starving in hunger is it acceptable in the socialism mode no not the industrial revolution that began in england in about 1750 was a revolution in many ways of producing goods and services this is we have to accept yes or no ayya which began in england in about 1750 was a revolution in many ways of production yes how many revolutions we have seen seen ma how many revolutions revolutions happened in 10 sectors yes or no next is abolition of medieval antiquated social economic political system arid industrialization to lead to an era of shared plenty become the declared aims of one society from another who emerged as a nation forget it ever since 1750 the beginning of ir man has increasingly used machines and mechanical power to do the work that he formerly did with his own muscles and the help of animals so machine age of machine in one word is or no labor work replaced by machine meantime the machines invented by man have become more and more complex and provided him with goods and services that could not otherwise be produced at all also machines have increased the amount of goods yes man can turn out in a given time is or no the steam engine spinning machines if it is hand weaving means 10 times spinning machines 300 times output so which will go after naturally we will we'll go after to the spinning machine so there is this also very big uh, positive with respect to this it has a both impact industrialization and capitalism last but not least industrialization and capitalism broad benefits is or no yes as well as the hardships this is how you have to conclude your answers 
industrialization and capitalism brought benefits as well as hardships and evils to the man hardships and evils to man such as unemployment smoky deplorable living condition crowded cities unhealthy living and working condition rivalry and conflict between the nations as working men got the right to work what is the movement ma please uh, please fill the answer which is the movement which has worked for the right to work which has set the base for the right to work as working men got the right to work and elect the representatives in the government they forced the passage of the laws that eliminated many of the early evils that industrialization has brought about yes after that first factory act and the subsequent acts has reduced the time of the working time for the children women they regulated they stopped the employment of the women and children in the hazard was mine so many such actions has happened chart this moment very good aslam ideas of socialism also arose very very important because it has given a tough challenge which one the emergence of socialism ideas of socialism also arose which while recognizing the importance of the machines and making them even better aimed at solving the problems created by capitalism by building a new social order what is that but many problem remain the unsolved problems are always a challenges to all the nations so now does uh, can, can we hear the voice of defending for the laser fair can we hear the voice of people defending for the laser fair definitely not now we have started with the, this is the end the last but not least first industrial revolution 18th century steam based machine steam based machine second industrial revolution 19 to 20th century electrical energy based mass production era of electricity energy based third industrial revolution third industrial revolution computer and internet based knowledge fourth industrial revolution second information revolution early in the 21st century artificial intelligence now we are in our fourth ir artificial intelligence information technology intelligence plus information as on no big data lot clouds so first is a water and steam second is an electric power third is an electronic and information technology now fourth is an automation and data exchange digitization as on no my dear friends please let me know yes i have completed so the first industrial revolution which has set the base now we are in our fourth industrial revolution yes we are in the digital india is on no digital india completely digitization even our classes are digital classes online classes is on no we just minimized our efforts yes minimize your mistakes and maximize your success so very come so with this i have completed the topic industrial revolution probably next month i'll start american french revolution imperialism first world war so world history is very very important and today's class i have given you three short questions okay please start writing on the questions especially on the revolutions okay and above all impact impact of industrial revolution is the question i'm expecting for this year if at all they wanted to ask question from ir they will not ask, uh, they will not there's no chances of asking why industrial revolution took place in england already they have asked once chances are there even if it comes you can very well manage but it's my humble request for you to start writing the mains answers yes please start write an answer with respect to short notes or long notes whatever it is option is you with you lies with you 150 or 250 words for the impact of industrial revolution impact means it should discuss both the positive as well as negative here more negative we have okay so yes ma with this i have completed tonight we have the last part part 3 of important international organization ecology of ecology and environment please don't miss any of the classes because very important they are of course you will learn many thing in class thank you and all yes this is your dl ma'am use the code dl10 and go for the subscription without any further delay so that you can come under my able guidance yes my 15 years journey my experience of course i have learned a lot after my every failure so that i could say yeah, confidently that will help you to reach your destination with ease i will i will function as a i will be a 
a protective shield from minimizing your mistakes and maximizing your success okay yes for which you keep following your dl map extend the support in all the positive manners in a massive support thank you one and all yes until then it's bye from your dl ma'am good luck good day bye bye stay connected thank you one and all thank you friends